Hey friend, welcome to my channel, Kareen Alude, where we talk about everything, and I'm Kareen Alude. If you're not yet part of the Friendship Circle, please be sure to like, subscribe, and join the Friendship Circle. If you're already part of the Friendship Circle, please be sure to turn on your notification bell so you can always know when I post a new upload. Now let's get into this video. Before I even start, disclaimer. I will be mispronouncing many of these names, though I made the effort to really learn the pronunciations. My tongue just doesn't twist like that. <laughs> I know there's a lot of angry people in the comments that's going to be like, hey, that's not how you pronounce it. That's not how you pronounce it. Save your breath. <laughs> but today we are talking about Reika. And let me say, I'm into Bollywood films that's a fun fact many of you guys don't know about me but i just love the colors i love the colors a lot since i was i think cheetah girls girls go to bollywood the that movie that put me into like bollywood films <laughs> it's like every movie is a musical the colors the costumes the hairstyles and the very dark beauty i love it breaka is one of those that i feel in my humble opinion is one of the most beautiful bollywood actresses and one of the most iconic of all time in 1986 the illustrated weekly of india wrote there has never been anyone quite like reka a woman once known never quite forgotten reka has often been compared to greta garbo and yes greta garbo is on my list and has been cited by media as her Indian equivalent. But I also think she has a lot of similarities with Rita Hayworth as well. In terms of life, if you haven't seen my Rita Hayworth video, you will want to watch that after this one. She has started more than 180 films. That means she has not stopped working <laughs> since she's gotten into the industry. That is hard work right there. In 2010, the government of India honored her with Padma Shri, which is India's fourth highest civilian honor. Reiko was born in present-day Chennai on October 10th, 1954. She was born to South Indian actors Gemini, Ganesan, and Pushpavali when the couple were unmarried. And she is fluent in Hindi and English, having revealed she thinks in the latter. Reka did not reveal her family background until mid-1970s. During her unstable childhood, her relationship with her father, Gemini, was very, very poor. Gemini did not want to recognize her as his daughter and give her a living. Asked by an interview about her father, Reka believed he was never even aware of her existence. She recalled that her mother often spoke about him and added that despite never Ever having lived with him she felt his presence all through even so the relationship started to improve five years after her mother died in 1991 always an awkward and lonely girl she admitted that she experienced childhood obesity in a 1990 interview to the illustrated weekly of india she called herself fattest girl in the school in this period she developed a love for dance and sports although never participated in them due to her weight and i must say i must pause i was looking high and low for pictures of her quote unquote fat and i could not find any the most i found was just like a little chubby cheeks <laughs> that's it but she was not i mean in my opinion she was not fat you know but in bollywood standards and in india i guess weight is really really important comment below if you're indian or you know like how important is weight because we're gonna talk about her weight a lot in this video because it was a, a a big catalyst to her career but it was such a big deal for her and i was like yo this lady was not fat i don't know what she was talking about or what other people were talking about but her version of being fat is like far from it you know because of this she was bullied by many of her schoolmates who called her lota and that's Tamil for bastard. Reka describing herself as a firm believer in God and destiny used to spend her time at the school's chapel. According to her biographer, Yasser Uzman, Reka was asked by her mom to start an acting career when their family faced financial troubles in 1968, as she was sure that it would help them. Although never having an interest for acting, Reka, who was initially aspired to be a flight attendant, obeyed her desire and at the age of 13 to 14 while she was in ninth grade she dropped out from school to start a full-time career in acting she later regretted not having completed her education and she was always a protective sister so she did not let her younger sister radha to join her because she wanted radha to finish her education 
She appeared in several commercially successful films at the time, yet she was not regarded for her acting abilities. And according to the author Tejaswini Ganti, the industry was surprised by her success as her dark complexion, plump figure, and garish clothing contradicted the norms of beauty prevalent in the film industry and in society. So here's where the audacity comes in. So according to critics, Reka was quote unquote dusky, which is like a word for dark. She was plump and could not speak good Hindi. She was mocked by directors and fellow co-stars and co-actors. At a movie premiere, Shashi Kapoor had said about Reka, how is this dark, plump, and gosh actress ever going to make it? How rude. Reka recalls that the way she was perceived at the time motivated her to change her appearance and improve her choice of roles. She stated in her own words, and I quote, I was called the ugly duckling of Hindi films because of my dark complexion and South Indian features. I used to feel deeply hurt when people compared me with the leading heroines of the time and said I was no match for them. I was determined to make it big on sheer merit. So the mid-1970s marked the beginning of her physical transformation. She started paying attention to her makeup, dress sense, and work to improve her acting technique and perfect her Hindi language skills for three months. To lose weight, she followed a nutritious diet, led a regular disciplined life, and practiced yoga, later recording albums to promote physical fitness. According to Khalid Mohammed, the audience was floored when there was a swift change in her screen personality, as well as her style of acting. Reiko began choosing her film roles with more care. Hindustan Times described her physical change and loss of weight as, quote unquote, and this is a direct quote, guys, one of cinema's and perhaps real life's most dramatic transformations, arguing that Reka morphed from an overweight, dark, ordinary girl into a glamorous and beautiful enigma, shrouding her life in an intriguing, garble-like mystery. And I'm going to read a direct quote from a Bollywood magazine article just so y'all can see how disturbing this was. And I quote, Years of perseverance, diet changes, and multiple skin lightening treatments made Reka the swan from the ugly duckling. Yes, and that accent, Reka worked very hard to master Hindi, so much so that she dubbed for other actresses who cannot speak Hindi and also undertook many training sessions to teach herself fluent Urdu. Now, doesn't that sound like what Rita Hayworth went through? If you see my Rita Hayworth video and how she had to really dramatically change her accent to be an American star. Are. so apparently this happens in every country i guess except haiti we we don't have these problems i guess the islands and quote unquote the third world countries are the only ones educated enough to know that you do not discard someone because of their accent <laughs> this is pretty disturbing but the fact that she could not speak fluent hindi and she was already dark was a problem for them and then as i'm looking at her childhood childhood pictures she was not dark I mean, I guess according to Indians, I, I guess, but in my opinion, this was not a dark skinned woman, you know, she was very chocolate, but not like, you know, the way they're describing her was as if she was the color of charcoal or something. And not that, that there would be anything wrong with that. It was just, it's, it's, it's eye opening. Let me say that. But on a quick minor side note, I want you, if you're commenting and you're e easily triggered or irritated by my accent, if you haven't seen my community post from yesterday or the day before, I believe, <laughs> where a subscriber was so irritated by my accent um, and mispronunciation sometimes that you guys don't understand. Well, me, I'm fine. I'm perfectly fine. Like I'm my self-esteem <laughs> could not be shattered. But for most people like Oreka, or Rita Hayworth who you revere it does a lot to their self-esteem their confidence and it says a lot about society in general and how they don't accept anything that is different from them or that doesn't stick out from them and I started having to post proof on the community tab of how this really triggers people in the long dissertations and emails that I get and I could care less and I don't know how I can advocate for this or people with accents or anything like that. But it just, there needs to be more advocacy because it's a 
a common theme time and time again when I do my breakdowns, not just with women, but with men also. Throughout history, if you've seen any of my breakdowns, you'll see they're always having to change and really work hard on their accents. And people just are not satisfied with them. Isn't it sad how only when the woman has completely altered herself in the industry is she considered beautiful? How dark everywhere is just not considered beautiful, like dark skin. When Simi further asked about what all went into her transformation, Reiko replied, and this is so sad, but this is a direct quote from her. Those days, we did it all the wrong way. We had no choice. That what I am today and the knowledge that I have of food is not what I knew then. Then you went on the starvation diet. I used to have just a lychee milk. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that. For months together. Sometimes I used to go on popcorn diet. So basically I used to starve. And this is so sad, guys. So, so sad. And she wasn't even fat. Reka shot for a film. The 1969 film would later be released as Do Shikari. The film had a deeply disturbing experience during its shoot. It is said that the film's hero, the much older Biswajit, forcibly kissed her several times while shooting a romantic scene in the midst of whistles and hoots much to the embarrassment of a teenage Reka. And this guy was a senior citizen, okay? And she was a teen. So <laughs> I could not find his age online during the incident, but he was a senior citizen, okay? He looked like Joe Biden. <laughs> oh my God. It's like Joe Biden kissing on, I don't know, Zendaya, but Zendaya actually being like, 17 or 16. It's, it's just weird. In today's times, the senior actor would have been called out for sexual harassment, but back then it was passed off as a funny incident and everyone laughed from the director to other cast members. They thought it was so funny. It did, however, scar Reka further. The incident reportedly finds a mention in Yasser Usman's biography of the actor called Reka, an untold story. So she did later start talking about it, but for a long time, it just really scarred her. But Reka's turning point came in 1978 with her portrayal of a rape victim in the social drama guard. She plays R.I.T., a newly married woman who gets gravely traumatized after being ganged raped. Oh. The film follows her character struggles and traumatized with the help of her husband. The film was considered her first notable milestone and her performance was acclaimed by both critics and audiences. She received her first nomination for Best Actress at the Filmfare Awards. And that same year, another release, Kadar Ka Sikandar, emerged as the biggest hit of that year, as well as, as well as one of the biggest hits of the decade. And Reka was set as one of the most successful actresses of these times. The film opened to a positive critical reception and Reka's brief role earned her a Best Supporting Actress nomination at the Filmfare. The 1990s saw a drop in Reka's success. Few of her films were considered uh, were successful and many of her roles were condemned by reviewers. Critics did know, however, that unlike most of the actresses of her generation who succumbed to playing character parts, typically of mothers and aunts, Reiko was still playing leading roles at a time when younger female stars rose to fame. Halfway through the decade, Reka managed to halt her decline when she accepted several highly controversial films, including Kama Sutra, A Tale of Love. <laughs> I've seen that one. That's why I'm laughing. Kama Sutra, comment below if y'all want that or if it's like too risque or controversy, controversial for my audience here. Comment below if you guys want that. Also, Irreversible with Monica Bellucci. So Kama Sutra, a foreign production directed by Mira Nair, was an erotic drama and many felt her role of a Kama Sutra teacher in the film would damage her career. She was undeterred by the criticism. Todd McCarthy of Variety described her as exquisitely composed in the part. And in 1990, Reka married Delhi-based indis industrialist Mukesh Agarwal. Agarwal was a self-made entrepreneur and owner of the kitchenware brand Hotline. He is believed to have had a long-standing struggle with depression. And according to Reka's biographers, she only found out about his mental health after the marriage. He was introduced to Reka through a mutual friend and fashion designer, Bina Ramani, who termed him Reka's crazy fan. He proposed marriage to her on March 4th, 1990, and a few months later, while she was in London, he committed S-word, like he ended his own life. After several previous attempts, leaving a note, don't blame anyone. 
She was hounded by the press at the time, a period which one journalist termed as the toughest time in her life. Wahana Somaya observed the period, speaking of a quote-unquote, a strong anti-wave against the actress. Some called her a witch, some a murderess, but added that soon Reka came out of the eclipse once again unblemished. They really did blame her for his death and she had quote-unquote allegedly multiple affairs, some with married men and the blah blah blah, in which the um, media always came after her, but she never spoke on any of those. She always, when she did speak, denied everything. But I think because she was just, you know, such a beautiful woman who they already hated in the beginning, they just wanted to label her as that. I couldn't imagine being with someone with mental health issues who acts out and then everyone blames me when he ends his life. I couldn't even imagine. That is just so disturbing. And it's salacious fans and media that do this. Even in looking up little clips to do my little slideshow for her and stuff. There's a lot of videos out here that are titled, Oh, Reka runs away from this um, actor. Like all this salacious drama that has no basis for her. And I'm just looking like, oh my God, she's older now. Leave her alone. Let her have her peace. But <sighs> nonetheless. People believe that she was so traumatized from this event that this is the reason why she hasn't married since, although there has been rumors of her dating, which she has denied them all. And the media always made fun of her being childless, not being married. Like it was like a butt of a joke for her. And like I said, she never spoke on any of those. Reka's dream of leading a happy married life remained a dream, but she ensured that her younger sister Radha got married and lives in the US. Speaking about her and her half sisters, Reka had told Deccan Chronicle, they are all, and I quote, they are all doing very well in life. My sister Radha, who lives in US, has discovered her craft in painting. She is by far the most beautiful among us sisters. If only Radha had been as tall as me, she'd have been the actor in the family. In the end, however, many times the media or even her fans labeled her the quote-unquote lonely and childish heroine. In her rare interviews, Reka always appeared strong, decorous, and otherworldly. I don't feel the pinch, she said, you know, or the sting. It's gone. I'm healed now. I'm not bitter anymore, she told TV host Simone Garwell in 2006 interview. So in 2011, Radcliffe listed her as the ninth greatest Indian actress of all time, noting it's hard not to be bowled over by Reka's longevity or her ability to reinvent herself. The actress took on a man's job and did it stunningly well, holding her own against all the top actors and being remembered despite them. Filmfare described her acting style, writing, and I quote, when it comes to style, sexiness, or sheer on-screen presence, she is unparalleled. She is is a fierce, raw, flinty performer with unbridled honesty. Her acting isn't gimmicky. And I'll say that, like, just from a raise of an eyebrow, she can give off the emotion. Like, even if you don't understand the language for most films, like, I read the subtitles, and according to my friends, my Hindi friends, they're always like, oh, the subtitles be wrong, and they translate it for me. But I can already kind of see the plot when from her movies, just from her facial expressions or a hand movement. Reka's reclusive nature has gone a long way towards building an aura of mystery around her she has a very mysterious aura i must say like i'm intrigued just looking at her the way she walks and even older it's it's crazy reiko rarely gives interviews and she mostly avoids parties and events asked once about her mysterious image she denied several times trying to live up to this image asserting it asserting it is press created she stated and i quote what mystery the media is the one that creates this image it's just that i'm basically shy by nature an introvert and fiercely private well i hate to break it to you reka but this is what makes a woman mysterious <laughs> when you're fiercely private and you're shy like it makes a beautiful combination for an aura of mystery film journalist anupama chopra who visited Reka in 2003 wrote that while tabloids had portrayed her as a reclusive woman twisted bitter by lecherous men and loneliness, in reality, Reka was none of these, describing her as chatty and curious, excited and energetic. 
optimistic, cheerful, and almost illegally optimistic. And this reminds me of myself. Many people who don't know me, who sees me in public, like in the past, will always assume I'm so serious and I'm so, you know. But when they get to know me, like, I'm a whole fool and I'm very goofy. I love to talk and things like that. But you don't give that side of you to everybody. And especially when you get so much hate, like Reka, you don't want to show the world who you are. You want to leave that for those who genuinely love and appreciates you and wants to get to know you. So I love that about her. And that is the nature. Like you can be mysterious and private, but vulnerable with those who genuinely care about you. According to critic Omar Qureshi, the term diva in India was coined for Reka. Mira Nair, who directed Reka in Kama Sutra, likens her to a Jamini Roy painting and says, like Marilyn Monroe is, sh is shorthand for sex, Reka is shorthand for charisma. And I agree. Filmmaker Sanjay Leela Bansali labels her the last of the great stars. And I agree. She was referred to as the reigning queen of Indian cinema at the 2012 13th International Indian Film Academy Awards held in Singapore, where she was given the outstanding contribution to Indian cinema, which is also referred to as the Lifetime Achievement Award. Today, Reka only occasionally emerges from her Randra bungalow to appear at Bollywood functions, draped in her signature silk saris and ornate jewelry. She still looks breathlessly beautiful, even in her older age. Like, she looks gorgeous guys many people are curious as to how she has maintained her beauty in youth for so long and Reiko swears by drinking 10 to 12 glasses of water every day indulges in a Ayurvedic spas at home and maintains a healthy eating habit she has mastered the art of makeup and mostly does all her makeup herself she indulges in regular exercise and loves to do yoga and meditation. Known for her superb dancing skills, she keeps herself busy with dancing, gardening, and doing her household chores, so she likes to stay busy. And she ensures that she eats the last meal of the day by 7.30 p.m., which is very, very important. This is something I have incorporated since the pandemic and my PCOS weight gain because I was an athlete all throughout my life <laughs> until 2020. <laughs> Let's not speak of it. But, you know, getting back into that, many of you guys have been noticing, especially on my Instagram, that is one of the key. I do not eat past six. It's not seven. I don't eat past six. I drink at least 64 ounces of water a day and making sure you just stay busy. Like I don't work out a lot or heavy, but I go for nature strolls in my area and I definitely make sure I get sleep and I just try to not be stressed. And the, the weight slowly, healthily, goes off of you i'm not a believer in fast weight loss i want my metabolism to remain healthy and i rather do the slow and steady than the fast quick and unable to maintain and that is reka's goal as well so that is key for her she does not overeat and have several meals as well and she's not known for snacking and she is also usually in bed by 10 p.m Sleeping early is also key. I don't care how busy I am. I will not stay up past 11. It has to be something like I'm on vacation and I'm with my family or something like that. But sleeping really does wonders for your mood. People cannot get to you when you do that. And just live life, guys. I This is it for this video. Please comment below any more Bollywood stars you guys would want me to do breakdown for or anyone else in general and just leave a nice comment about Rika. Um, be kind, you know, she suffered a lot of negativity through critics, press and fans for so long. Just don't come on here being negative some more. Be nice, be kind and in general, your kindness is a reflection of who you are, your upbringing and your spirit. I love you guys. Until next time. Mwah.